Hey everyone, hope you're doing good. Today we're going to address and tackle the most common question that I get asked when it comes to trailer repair. Trailer wiring and specifically how do I wire my trailer seven way plug. Today we're going to wire the seven way RV plug but we're going to wire it for utility trailer wiring. So the same thing you'd have with six way wiring and we'll get to that shortly. There's gonna be a few tools you're gonna need. Your tools may not look exactly like mine, but you'll get the point. A pair of side cutters is good to have. A pair of crimpers, uh, they don't necessarily have to be like this. They make some that are cheaper, that work just fine for what you're doing. Wire strippers are very handy. Electrical tape, spend a little extra money, buy good electrical tape. Uh, that way when it gets cold outside, it doesn't get hard, brittle, and peel off. Some type of utility knife, box cutter, 12 volt test light, you may need that to check your truck plug or a light on the trailer. And then just a couple of screwdrivers. One is a very small flathead, one is a Phillips combo with a flathead on the other side. It's also got a magnet that's handy in case you drop a screw or you can put the screw on there. So shortly, we're gonna take this stuff to the trailer. We're going to remove the old existing plug and we're gonna try to simplify how to install the new plug and to do it correctly. Let's get to it. So this is the plug we're gonna replace. This is a really fancy red see-through plug. You know what's extra special about this plug? Absolutely nothing. Just keep it simple. So if you're going into a parts store or trailer supply, don't buy novelty plugs, buy you something good. What I like to use personally, and it's just a personal preference, is a Pollock seven-way RV plug. They hold up well, they do a good job. Now note, the more you use this, the quicker it's gonna wear out. This is a wearable item. It has to be replaced from time to time. The trailer we're actually working on today is a commercially used trailer. It gets plugged in all the time and unplugged and switched vehicles. So these wear out pretty quickly, um, but we're gonna to get to that today. One thing I didn't mention earlier in the video when talking about tools, keep a pen and a piece of paper handy so you can take note of your wiring diagram that's already there to help you replace it um, if, if it is wired correctly. Uh, today we're going to use a scenario of we don't know what wiring, what colors it is, we're going to diagnose it and we're going to do it from the very beginning. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is remove our cover. So we're going to take off the cable clamp and normally there is a set screw right here but this one's broke out so we'll have to do that. Let's take the set screw off. And push your cable out and like I said earlier if you're just doing just need to put a new plug on it you can note where the wires go their position on your piece of paper and then you can just put the plug back on it the scenario we're going to use today is as if maybe the plug were cut off or ripped off and we don't know which wire goes to what so we're going to cover that so let's uh, take all of our wires loose Slide the cover off. And now, before we forget, we're going to take the socket out of the cover. Just back the set screw off. You don't have to take it all the way out. You can use your screwdriver, push that out. Open up the rear cable clamp. And again, don't take it all the way out. Push the clamp open and then go ahead and put your cover on. Many times I forget to put the cover on, get the plug wired, nice, ready to go. Then we have to start over. So now that we got the cover on, we have our wires. And just check them out to make sure they're okay. Uh, make sure they have a good uh, strip on them. I'm gonna go ahead and recut all of these and restrip them just to clean them up a little bit. Um, for six-way wiring, like we're doing, like I said again, this is six-way utility wiring that we're putting in a seven-way plug. Just cut them all off the same length. Make them nice and neat. If you see any corrosion in here, you need to trim that back so you don't see corrosion. Sometimes the corrosion is so bad you have to replace the whole cord. Uh, we'll address that in another video. So most of the time your white is your ground, but we didn't wire this trailer, so we don't know that for a fact. So the first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to isolate our ground. So we're gonna strip it. 
then we're going to twist it up and I'm going to use a battery charger. So on this battery charger I have here, this is a large battery charger. Any 12 volt battery charger will work. Uh, we're going to put it on 12 volt, 2 amp, very small um, amperage just, just because we're trying to isolate the ground wire, then we're going to isolate every wire from there. So we're going to ground the battery charger to the trailer. Looks like a good ground here. Then we believe this is our ground. If this is a ground, it will make a pretty good spark. Um, so just touch it very quickly. After I turn the battery charger on, it will make a spark. There's no spark there, so there may not be a ground on this trailer, or it could be a different color. So I can see here, it looks like the white wire is the ground. Let's try it one more time. There it goes. So it's just, that's a hard spark. So the white wire is our ground. So if you wanna write that down on your piece of paper, white is ground, we can start everything else from there. So we're gonna go and strip off all the other wires. And strip off about a quarter of an inch. You don't want it too short, but you for sure don't want it too long. So once you get them stripped, twist them up as tight as you can get them. So that way when you clamp them in the back side of the socket, you'll get a good connection that will last until the plug wears out. So we're gonna now hook the ground to the ground wire. You can leave it hooked to the treader, it will work. I just like doing it to the cord itself. That way, if there's an issue in the cord, we'll be able to find that a little easier. You can always bend it back like that. So now we're going to take our hot. I have somebody standing at the back of the treader. We're going to see which wire goes to which. In, in, in six-way wiring, like I said again, just remember this is six-way wiring code that we're putting in a seven-way RV plug. So normally your yellow is left turn. So I'm gonna turn that on. I can, s yep, so we're left turn there. Your red wire is normally your hot 12 volt wire that will charge your breakaway battery system. Um, or if you're in a cargo trailer, this would maybe turn on any auxiliary lights you might have. So we're gonna check it. So I can see my breakaway battery box that's showing charging. So that means that is the charge wire. Green wire, right turn. That is the right turn. Brown is clearance or marker lamps. Those are working. And on this one, black is going to be brake. That's all we have left. Sometimes blue is used for brakes. When we hit that, I can hear the magnets engaging. So that will be our brake wire. So now that we have everything isolated, we know what goes to what, we're actually gonna turn, we're gonna turn a battery charger off and then we're gonna put this plug together. So just double check your wires again, make sure everything's good. All right, if you'll notice on the bottom here, there's a long slot. On the top side, there's a shallow hole. That is for the upper set screw. This is the bottom socket, so this is how you know which way is up, which way is down. So this is the six o'clock position. What I like to do is just stick my thumb in that. That way I keep it in the correct position all the time. And we're gonna work this like a clock, going clockwise. We're gonna start in the one o'clock position and that will be our charge wire, which we noted earlier was the red wire. So that'd be our 12 volt charge, which connects to the breakaway battery system, keeps that little battery charged. And uh, like I said, if you have a cargo shredder, it will also run your interior light sometimes, depending upon how the manufacturer wired it. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the three o'clock position, which will be right turn, which will be our green wire. Just make sure you get them tight. Next will be our 
our five o'clock position, which will be our brake wire on this wiring. It is black. Some manufacturers do use a blue wire. It's very common for brakes as well. Again, that's why it's important to test your wires out and just don't go by your average wiring diagram because they're not always correct. So now we're going to move on to the 7 o'clock position, which will be the most important wire in six-way wiring or RV wiring. Your ground, most wiring failures result to a bad or no ground at all. You have to have a ground in 12-volt wiring or you're not going to get anything. So ground, which is our white wire, goes in the 7 o'clock position. Now our nine o'clock position will be our yellow or left turn. And then last but not least, our 11 o'clock position, which will be our brown wire clearance or marker lights also known as running lights or several different names depending on what part of the country you live in. We like to call them running lights. So let's go over this one more time. So the slot on the bottom, which is our six o'clock position, the small hole on top at 12 o'clock. One o'clock position is 12 volt charge wire that's charging from the truck this red wire on this shredder. The three o'clock position is our right turn green wire, which is a very common color. Five o'clock position is black, which is our brake wire coming from the, the vehicle brake controller. Sometimes it is blue. The white wire, which is in our seven o'clock position, is the ground wire. The yellow wire here in our nine o'clock position is our left turn. And then our 11 o'clock position, which will be our brown wire, will be the running lights, clearance lights, or marker lights. So once you have that done, just look around to make sure you don't have a little straggler wire. If you do, many times you can just nip that off and you'll be fine. And now we're going to slide our cover over our socket. One thing we want to do is make sure we don't expose any of this wiring beyond the cover, try to get that sealed up. These covers are not waterproof, don't get me wrong, but we want to keep any debris out of there that we can. So you push this together and there is a slot. Slot goes at the bottom. Tighten small set screw down. You have to be careful with these. Even on a good Pollock plug, you can over tighten and cause the plug to crack. If you do that and crack the plug, just get you another plug and start over because you will have issue with it. Now we make sure we have good insulation beyond our clamp. We're going to tighten the clamp down. I'll use a Phillips to get it tight. Get this pretty snug, but again, just don't over tighten it. This stuff is plastic. One question I get all the time is, do you, why don't you use the metal plugs? We used the metal plugs years ago, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And they're very bad about corroding. The internal parts of a metal plug are the same exact internal parts of a plastic outer. The housing may be a little better, but they are prone to rust um, and they get, get hard to put in the treader socket. So that's it on here. So next thing you would do, we plug this into your tow vehicle. Make sure you don't, make sure your lights work. Um, if you believe you have it wired right and your lights are not working, then you would go to your, your truck. You would use the test light, test each function of that. If something's not working there, then you would check your fuse panel on that, which would be in your owner's manual. I hope this has been helpful. Um, like I said, again, this is the most common question I get asked um, about how do I wire a seven-way plug. Uh, we will cover the RV plug in another video soon. Um, many times the RV plug, which is seven-way wiring, does go color for color in the socket. Um, it's a little easier to use on that, but it does get confused with a six-way wiring um, and six-way wire. 
Um, when we moved to that video, the 7 y wire is a little more difficult for it's one extra wire and it's a little heavier gauge wire and insulation uh, because usually it's running more lighting on there. So I hope this video is helpful. Um, if you have any comments, um, please uh, put those below or if you have any questions. Uh, don't, don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe button. We're, we're hoping to do a bunch of videos that will be helpful um, to y'all guys that are out there that work on your own traders um, and solve some of the mysteries. Uh, one myth I'd like to bust, we, we have people say all the time, well, you know, I have a Dodge seven-way plug or a Ford. If they are wired correctly, all domestic seven-way plugs on the tow vehicle are exactly the same. Every wiring position is the same. Colors are different, yes, depending upon manufacturer, but the plugs are not different. If the truck is wired correctly, it should fit on any trailer that is wired correctly. So I hope that answered any questions. See you soon.